Hallelujah. Again, good night, everyone. This is Prophet Bernard. And tonight we are going to be dealing with feasts, festivals, celebrations, and holidays. What should the Christian do? What should the Christian do? Now, interestingly, we began our reading tonight from the book of 1 Kings chapter 8. And we saw where Solomon brought up the Ark of the Covenant. That's in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 2 to verse 11. We see where Solomon in verse 2 assembled the people of Israel, the men of Israel, in the month of Ethanim, with, which is the month of Tishri which is somewhere around September, October. It's the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Boots. And he assembled the men of Israel during that festival to go bring up the Ark of the Lord into the temple from the Tabernacle of Meeting. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 9, the Bible says, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. In Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 3, it says, you must not do as they do in Egypt where you used to live. And you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. This is the command of the Lord to Israel. And the command of the Lord to Israel extends to us in principle. We cannot do what the nations around us are doing because we are a different nation. The Bible says that we are a peculiar people. We are a holy nation. We are a royal priesthood. And so we cannot do what other nations are doing. In other words, we have to come out from the abominations of the nations in terms of the practices of those nations. Now, Within the secular world and in some Christian circles, there are many practices, festivities, and celebrations that people have adopted as part of their normal life. Whether in the secular world or in the Christian world, there are festivities and celebrations that people have adopted. Now, these celebrations can be identified either as uh, holidays, festivals, or days that are dedicated uh, uh, to, to, to certain practices that are carried out in celebratory forms. Unknowing to many is that these celebrations and festivities that's in the secular world are tied to either a cult, or occult, or a, or a occult holiday, or a feast or festival, which uh, 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 worship ceremonies are done in honor of the gods that they venerate, or the spirits that they worship in the religions and spiritual movements that are tied to those festivities. So as Christians, we must become aware of those celebrations and festivities within our region and our local cultural context so that we are not ignorantly captured and entangled with the practices and the abominations of the nations. So as a Christian, you have to become culturally aware this is not something that i'm trying to to impose on you but paul the apostle even practiced cultural awareness even in in athens when he went to the temple and he saw all kinds of idols and he even saw an a, an altar that was said to the unknown god and he injected himself in that culture and allowed the people to understand the dangers of what they did and the necessity of 
turning away from those abominations to the Lord. Any practice, festival, feast, holy day or holiday or celebration that is not tied to the instruction of the Lord God in scripture is dangerous to adopt, to follow and to practice. Let me say it again. Any practice, any feast, any festival, any celebration that is not tied to the instruction of the Lord in scripture is dangerous to practice. Here is why. Because a feast and a festival is not something that is just on the surface. It is spiritual. It is spiritual. The feasts and the celebrations instructed by God in scripture were given not because God wants to entertain us. I want you to understand this. They were not given because God wants to entertain people. But because each feast, festival, or celebration in some way speaks to the redemptive plan of God through Jesus Christ. The observance and the celebration of those feasts are prophetic spiritual enactments that are rehearsing in a prophetic sense the work of Christ to redeem believers out of sin and out of this world. Now, these prophetic rehearsals, you know them as feasts in the Bible, were given to Israel. Let me say it, Israel, as part of their covenant responsibility to prophesy and to rehearse and to enact the plan and work of God in redeeming the world out of sin. They were prophetic enactments that were given to Israel as a part of their covenant responsibility as a priesthood nation to proclaim to the world through their celebrations the redemptive plan of God through Jesus Christ. For example, there are seven biblical feasts we call them appointed times or the Mohadim, which are recorded in scripture. These are number one, Passover, which is the salvation or deliverance from sin. Number two, the unleavened bread, which is permanent solution to sin. Number three, first fruits, resurrection from the dead. Number four, the feast of weeks of Pentecost, which is the coming of the Holy Spirit. Number five, the feast of trumpets, which is the rapture of the church. Number six, the day of atonement, which is the redemption of the Jewish nation and by extension, the nation called the church. And number seven, the feast of tabernacles or the feast of boots, which is the coming of the Messiah to rule the world with his saints. Now, each feast represents a dimension of Jesus' redemptive work and reveals a dimension of Jesus. Thus, if we are commemorating these feasts in celebratory form, we are anticipating these feasts was a celebration in anticipation of the work that Messiah Jesus would do to save us from our sins and connect us back to God. Therefore, if we consider this mindset and what I'm presenting to you, we have to now examine every practice, feast, celebration, holiday, whether secular or spiritual or sacred, and if Evaluate it in consideration of what is it commemorating about Jesus and his work of redemption, whether past, present, or future. What is it commemorating about Jesus and his redemptive work, whether past, present, or future? Now, my statements concerning the feast 
are not to draw us back into rehearsing or enacting what Jesus has already fulfilled. As there are some feasts that are already fulfilled, they were fulfilled already. But to say like Apostle Paul, do not let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality. Yet to come shadows of the reality yet to come and watch this now and christ himself is the reality now the feasts are shadows of the reality but christ himself is the reality did you hear what i said jesus christ is the reality of the feasts which are shadows of his work that he's going to perform. Now, if the feasts are shadows of the reality, celebrating Jesus who is the reality is therefore fulfillment of observation of the feasts of the Lord. Let me say it again. If the feasts are a prophetic enactment of the redemptive plan of God through the work of Jesus Christ and Jesus is the reality celebrating Jesus is therefore commemoration and observation of the feasts of the Lord let that one sink in for a minute now if we consider the above that I just presented to you. The question now is whether or not a Christian should participate in practicing the biblical feasts, festivals, and relevant observances. The answer to this was settled long ago at the Apostolic Council in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 15, verse 27 to 29. Let me read it for you. Acts chapter 15, verse 27. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. Verse 28, I want you to hear this. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. To who? The Holy Spirit. Not the apostles. To the Holy Spirit. And then to us, the apostles. To lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Listen. That you abstain from things offered to idols. In other words, abstain from idolatry. You abstain from blood, that is from rituals, from sexual and from sexual immorality. In other words, holiness. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. And then the last part says, fear well. In other words, the Jerusalem decree settled the matter of circumcision, observances of feasts, observances of new moons. This is why Paul could have written to the church and said to them, don't let anyone condemn you. Paul was not saying this arbitrarily. He was not saying this out of his own wisdom. He was saying this out of the wisdom of the Spirit of God. Now, we as Christians, Christians, we who are born of the water and of the spirit, Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, we are free from the burdens of such feasts and festivals and their relevant practices. But we are commanded by the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 20.
22. Let me go to Luke chapter 22 for you. And verse 14. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. This was a feast that they were enacting. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and he gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Watch this now. Watch this and listen to this now. This is the only time that Jesus said something like this. Do this. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But, and, 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 and of course, it goes on and, 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 and went on for the, from there and, and, and on. Now, we know that Jesus said, commemorate his death and return through the partaking of the supper, the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. This is a famous passage that is read by pastors all over when they are doing the communion, serving communion in the church. Please just bear with me, follow me, I'm taking you somewhere. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord, this is what Paul was saying, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. First instruction. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Watch this now. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, in other words, as often as you partake in the supper of the Lord, you are proclaiming, you are prophesying, you are preaching. You have entered into the ministry of proclamation. Proclamation is both preaching and teaching, but there is also the aspect of prophesying, the ministry of proclamation. You are proclaiming the Lord's death till he comes. My God, my God. The only instruction that Jesus left in terms of a celebratory uh, 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 mechanism is that we should celebrate his death and his return. No instruction was given by Jesus to celebrate the feasts. That is to the Christians. This one act, follow me, I'm going somewhere because I want you to think straight. This act of the communion celebrating the death resurrection and return of jesus recognizes commemorates and celebrates the three feasts jesus already fulfilled those are number one the passover number two unleavened bread and number three first fruits passover was his death unleavened bread was his burial first fruit was his resurrection as well as prophetically anticipating his return to fulfill the last three, which are not yet fulfilled by him. The Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Three are left to be fulfilled by him. Three on one side, three on the left, three on the right, 
but there is one in the middle and i'm going to talk about it it's called the feast of pentecost now are you still following me the feast of pentecost which is the coming of the holy spirit because you read the old testament you will find this feast of pentecost there 50 days after passover the coming of the holy spirit is the birth of the church and it is being celebrated every time we gather as Christians to fellowship, minister, and worship God under the guidance, influence, and leadership of the Holy Spirit. Every time we gather, even as we are doing now, we are celebrating the Feast of Pentecost. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, the Bible says, verse 24, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, we are in the time of the Feast of Pentecost prophetically as a church where we are gathering together, celebrating and commemorating the coming of the Holy Spirit as we worship God together. Now, with this mindset, we are therefore liberated from religion. And free to evaluate every celebration considering what it is saying about Jesus Christ. Thus, we are giving ourselves the opportunity as Christians to make an informed biblical decision as to whether we will participate in something. The goal of the Christian is to celebrate Jesus. The goal of the Christian is to celebrate Jesus. Participating in any cultural or secular festivities or celebrations ought to then be a point of concern for the Christian. The dangers of adopting and participating in cultural festivities and celebrations may vary depending on where we are and the depth of the spiritual practice and the demonic links. But God commands us to separate and not to learn the practices of the nations, whether cultural or spiritual, as they stand to lure us into idolatrous practices that are affront to the holiness and righteousness of God and that are connected to demonic prophecies. That are connected to opening demonic windows. Now, many of these practices though they are unassumingly harmless because they present themselves as entertainment. They are spiritually dangerous. There is no festivity, festival, feast, or celebration that is just harmless. There is a spirituality behind it. And so they stand to open up our lives to the attacks, afflictions, and the demonization of demonic spirits. Why? This is because these practices and their customs are heavily linked to the worship of demonic spirits and idols. The practices in the various celebrations, they serve as an act of worship. The devil knows that he could not just come to you and say, hey, as a Christian, I want you to honor the dead. He knows that he can't come to you with that. So what does he bring to you? All Saints Day. Oh, I'm, I'm stirring the pot tonight. 
The celebrations and the acts of worship, they are sacrifices to appease the spirits that are behind them. And one's involvement in these forbidden practices, those seemingly harmless, it stands to do some things. Let me tell you, number one, it incites the anger of the Lord against the individual. Why? Because you have gone against the word of the Lord not to do the practices of the nations. And you have gone against the words of even Jesus Christ to only remember and celebrate his death, resurrection, and return through the communion or the Lord supper as we have it number two it opens doors for demonization number three let me go back to number two many times we find ourselves in some situations where we are struggling with some issues and we wonder where are the, where is the root of these issues some of you you are struggling with lust but long ago you used to jump carnival you used to jump bacchanal hmm? You used to dump and wine, send five cent, ten cent, and dollar. Mm -hmm. You used to do those things. And now you become a Christian, but you have not renounced the idol of Bacchanal or the idol of Carnival. You have not renounced it. But, and so you're, you're still struggling with that demon of lust, that spirit of lust that is tied to that festivity. Number three. It causes compromise in one's Christian walk. Compromise in your Christian walk. It weakens, number four, it weakens your Christian's witness and your integrity, your Christian integrity. It weakens it. You see, there are those in your culture who might not have a problem with you celebrating Halloween or you as a Christian sending out your children to go trick-or-treating. But in the realm of the spirit, your integrity as a Christian is eroded, weakened. You can't stand before a demon and say, the Lord rebuke you. The demon would say, I rebuke you. Paul, I know. Peter, I know. John, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? Because you see, you have entered into a place of compromise. Compromise weakens your effectiveness, your witness, and your integrity as a Christian. Number, number five, it negatively affects the effectiveness of your prayer life. You are there celebrating this feast that has nothing to do with Jesus, this holiday that has nothing to do with Jesus, this celebration that has nothing to do with Jesus. And then you come. To command things to happen for you in the spirit realm. You, 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 are, you are confused. The spirit realm don't know you. Number six. It brings about the accusation of Satan against you. Which serves as his justification for his attack against your life. Number seven. It opens doors of interest in the occult depending on the celebration it opens doors of interest in the occult for believers to dabble in the unknown and so we we enter into a mixture we enter into a mixture of christianity and something else and that is what has happened even to many of us in the west we have retained African retentions, European retentions with our Christianity. And therefore, we have a mixture coming out. And so our Christian witness, the demonstration of our faith is not effective. We have to come out from among them. It is a fact that many of the festivities that are that that, that are uh, 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 carried out by people that are practiced by people of varying cultures are heavily linked to idolatrous practices. We are admonished to keep ourselves from idols. This was the instruction of the apostolic council in the book of Acts. 
keep yourself from idols. You will find that also in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 21. Let me see if I can read that quickly for you. 1 John chapter 5 verse 21. It says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. We are admonished to reject all falsity. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25. Let me see if I can read that very quickly for you. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25. It says, therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another truth must be part of us we are admonished to turn away from idols first thessalonians 1 verse 9 and have no fellowship or agreement no fellowship no fellowship or agreement with idols Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk with them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, here it is again. Come out from among them. <laughs> Listen, Paul wasn't just writing off his head. The man was writing scripture. Come out from among them and be separate. Do not practice the abominations of the nations, says the Lord. Be separate. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. My God, my God, this is serious. And live as new creatures in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. It is a known fact that many holidays and celebrations have found their way into the church through Catholic baptism. That is, the Catholic church, in an effort to keep countries united, began to give Christian meaning to pagan rituals. Listen, you cannot sanctify the devil. In order to unite nations, the Catholic Church in the past have Christianized pagan rituals. However, the Bible is clear that we must avoid the abominations of the nations. The scripture is above any organization. The word of God is above any man, woman, system, structure, church, ministry, or organization. When an organization gives an instruction that is against the word of God, I stand with the word of God. And so, we must avoid... The abominations of the nations, Deuteronomy 18, verse 9 to 14. That's what the scriptures instruct us. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 9. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Listen, we as new creation, we are coming into a land. The land... Of milk and honey. Spiritual. As a new creation. We are in this world. But not of this world. So it applies to us in spirit. And in principle. You shall not learn. Don't learn. 
the abominations of those nations. Thou shall not be found among you. Anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Or one who practices witchcraft. Or a soothsayer. Or one who interprets omens. Or a sorcerer. All those horoscope business that you have. Go throw it away. Or one who conjures spells. Or a medium. A spiritist. Or one who calls up the dead. Necromancy. All saints day. All souls day. Necromancy. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord, your God, drives them out from before you. You want to be driven out with them? Then practice the things that they are practicing. We are not to be conformed to this world, Romans 12, 2. And we are to come out from among them. In other words, not separate ourselves and go into a cave and hide. That's not what the Bible is saying. Not go take a rope and hang ourselves so we can go to heaven. No, that's not what the Bible is saying. Come out from among them means come out from the practices of the abominations of the nations. Their feasts, their festivals, their celebrations, their holy days. And so the scripture is very clear as it relates to what a Christian should do. So you say, prophet, I understand the secular. That's easy. So what about those feasts, those Jewish feasts that we are told we should celebrate? And we are being Jewish. Let me, let me use a word. We are being Jewishized by some Christians who say that we should celebrate the feast. What are we supposed to do? Well, the answer is clear. The celebration of Jesus is the fulfillment of the celebration of the feasts of the Lord. Because the feasts are the shadow, but Jesus is the reality. I don't need to go back into that for you. Paul laid it out clear in the scriptures. So the question is really and truly a non-question. Why are we burdening ourselves with things that don't belong to us. Why don't we occupy ourselves with the celebration of Jesus? Why don't we occupy ourselves with the fellowship and the communion of the saints of God? And so as children of God, there are some things that we know right off the bat in secular world that we shouldn't get ourselves entangled with. Because the moment we get ourselves entangled with these things, we have get gotten ourselves entangled with the world. So let me just mention a few of these. Number one, Halloween. Number two, Valentine's Day. Three, Diwali. Four, holy. Five, fagwa. Six, day of the dead. All fool's day. May day, St. Patrick's day. Carnival, Bacchanal, and Mardi Gras. Corpus Christi. Some traditions like Easter, Lent. <laughs> and let me punch in one. Christmas. And every kind of celebration that does not commemorate Jesus and the fulfillment of his redemptive work and the proclamation of his return. The scriptures are very clear. When you have come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. You must not do as they do in Egypt. Where they used to live. Where you used to live. And you must not do as they do. In the land of Canaan. Where I'm bringing you. Do not follow their practices. Let no one condemn you. For what you eat or drink. Or for not celebrating certain holy days. Or new moon celebrations or Sabbaths. For these rules 
are only shadows of the reality yet to come. And Christ himself is the reality. My friends, Jesus is the reality. Celebrate Jesus. Let your festivities and your celebrations spiritually be about Jesus Christ. And before you get yourself involved in something you don't know about, examine it in light of the word of God and see whether or not as a Christian you are supposed to partake of such things. God bless you.